How's it going, everybody? My name is Horia Perutsu, and I want to talk to you about one of the recent applications I've been building, an e-voting application using Hyperledger Fabric. So um, there's been a lot of talk about the um, the elections and if they're uh, meddled with, and you know, a lot of times it's about social media meddling with the elections, but um, there's also a nice, um, a nice application of blockchain and it being able to count and tally all the votes and being able to trace back um, to who actually voted um, if you actually need a recount. So um, this is kind of what we've done in this um, e-voting application. We've created uh, two certificate authorities, one for the voter organization and then one for the ordering organization. Um, then we've created a peer and then each time you register to vote, um, you'll kind of you'll put in your driver's license ID and I don't have any APIs to verify that it's a valid driver's license, um, but you can see where you would do that validation. And then that's where we create that public and private key for if you successfully register. And then we let you submit that vote transaction with that public and private key. And all of that is recorded on the blockchain. Um, so let me show you how that works. Um, the project itself is um, can be found on um, github.com slash IBM slash evote. The main two pro, uh, the main two directories that you'll have to worry about is the contract and the web app. The contract is the smart contract folder. The web app is all the uh, front end code and the server side code. So um, why don't we go ahead and start the server? Um, so I'm in the server directory here. I'll go ahead and hit npm start. That's going to do nodemon um, app.js in that server folder. And then now in my client, I can do npm run serve and that'll start the dev server now. Um, so pretty soon here, we should be able to log into the app and register a voter. Okay, so we can go to localhost um, 8080. All right, so we're in our uh, homepage of the app now. Um, the first thing we have to do is to enter a valid driver's license. Um, I don't have any APIs to check um, if it's a valid driver's license, but this is where you would implement that. So let's go ahead and do something like e uh, e one two three four five six. Um, then we can do San Diego, Korea. And if I try to register now, it'll error because I need to fill all the fields. Um, now it should be fine. Um, so voter with this voter ID is now updated in the world state. Now if we query again, so like if we query for this um, for this um, item, we should be able to find it. So you can see here we have all this um, something like the ballot is cast, etc. Uh, et um, if we just query by key, we can grab this key too. Um, so yeah, and the current poll standings right now, um, you can see the Democrats are at three votes and Independent Green um, are all lagging a little bit behind. So I'll add another vote to the Democrats to make it four. Um, so we'll do E, one, two, three, four, five, six um, to log in. So I'll show you here the error checking too. So it'll say, okay, this doesn't exist, but if we correctly enter in uh, E, one, two, three, four, five, six, we'll see that we do uh, log in to the app. And just a quick to show you kind of what's going on behind the scenes, um, we have this network uh, file and we call this register voter function. And in here, we're using this fabric network uh, library and we're actually enrolling this uh, user with the Fabric CA. So we're checking, you know, is does this does this uh, voter ID exist? If it does, we've already registered this voter, so we don't need to do it again. Once we know that this person hasn't been registered, we go ahead and register them, and we import that um, identity into, identity into the wallet. So we can see that E one two three four five six, the right here. And we can see the public key and the private key. And this is really important because when, when this user casts a vote, um, we're using this public and private key to sign the transaction. And that's how we can link back all these votes to the voters, um, ensure that there's no double voting, and have a way to trace uh, every little transaction within the system. So now let's go ahead and uh, cast the vote again. And we pass in our voter ID. And now it says, you know, we successfully recorded the vote. And let's go to the poll standings and nice uh, the democrats are at four now and this is all recorded within the blockchain platform 
Um, so if we look here, we should be able to see that E123456 has successfully recorded a vote for the Democrats. Um, so you can see that in, in this transaction ID, um, you can see, you know, we cast the vote. That's the transaction. The election ID is this. The voter ID is E123456, and they pick the Democrat. So you can see uh, now that there's four votes for the Democrats. We've updated the state there, and we've updated this person uh, to add a vote to the Democrats. Um, yeah, so that's more or less it uh, for the app. So uh, in the next couple of videos, I'll kind of dive into how exactly I connected this app and what the architecture is behind it and then go into the code as well. Um, so hopefully you like this demo. Um, you can go ahead and find the, the repo here and, and find all the assets here. And I have a kind of a step-by-step -step of how to actually uh, build the network. Everything is, is here. Um, so thanks for watching and see you in the next couple of videos.